then this month for this is my video for my December Hostess Club um, kits are ready to be picked up since everything has to be virtual right now um, the first thing we're going to make in this video is this little candy bar gift card holder okay looks just like that how cute is that and then we'll also be making this Christmas card gift card holder so it's a barn door and it opens like that and for both of those cards we'll be using the warm and toasty stamp set um, I used this a couple months ago and we only use this guy so this time we're going to use this one and this one and sharing Christmas cheer and just for you and the snowflakes so we're using quite a bit from this cling stamp and then we are using these papers and of course I cannot remember the name of these papers so let me quickly flip through my mini this is the last month that you're able to order from this catalog it's something about home or oh right here trimming the town so we're using the trimming the town designer series paper and we're using there's um, just one little bit of stamping right here and that comes from this stamp set here wrapped in Christmas and joy is the season also on the back comes from this uh, wrapped in Christmas stamp set and in the catalog there is actually a houses stamp set and die set that you could actually use to cut the houses out of the paper or stamp your own houses and make them your own um, I did not purchase the die set so I just fussy cut my houses and um, wreaths and trees and stuff so and then on the back of this on this background here I use this snowflake embossing folder so I just thought this was a fun little Christmas card it could you know you could put a gift card pocket here if you wanted um, so yeah this is the card that we are going to make and that again was called trimming the town and this is the last month for this catalog I will include the hostess code um, in the description below and send that to my customers who order online as well and all orders are due December 20th all right so let's go ahead and get started now you have kits that have everything in them and so we're gonna kind of take this slow and we're gonna start with this project first and so your kit has all three projects so to make just this you're going to need your strip of what is that called mossy meadow okay you will need your strip of trimming the town paper now you may have stars um, I didn't have very much many star paper left after one of the other cards so I had to switch to this uh, blue striped paper then you will also need this uh, I had to also switch because these little houses this is the back of that so and so I ran out of that but I had the, the little people and that will look just fine um, you also have some twine and I just bought this twine at Ho Hobby Lobby it's on sale 50% off so and then we have a little white piece that is already stamped for you that says um, what's it say S sharing Christmas cheer I think on that and then a green piece to mat that on and then you also have that I must have put in the wrong 
bag. Okay, a candy bar. And then I have also stamped and die cut those pieces for you. So that's what you're gonna need for this first project. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this back in here. And I'm gonna set this aside. So these are the things that you will need for the first project here. And I am going to stamp sending Christmas cheer again on this little white piece because um, mine's not stamped. I must have ran out of stamped pieces. So this is our stamp radis. And I'm going to go ahead and take my magnets off and I'm going to remove this foam. This is when you're stamping with the photopolymer. And I am going to stick this right there. Right like that. And I'm going to just put a magnet down there at the bottom. Then I'm going to place this sharing Christmas cheer as close to the top and to the left as I can. Now I'm using my Stamparatus because number one, my black ink, my Memento Tuxedo Black, I think needs a refill, so I'm gonna have to stamp it a couple times, and I'm out of refill ink, so that's coming on my next order. So we're gonna stamp it once, give it a good press. See how it's kinda light, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp ink it and stamp it again. Oh, let's just do a third time so we can make sure it's nice and crisp. That's much better. All right. Wipe that off. Go ahead and put that back in my set. I'm pretty sure I have all the other stamping done. Um, I just was short that one little piece. Okay. So now I'm going to take my stamp radis and just stick that there. Um, oh, magnets stuck together and they are strong. So let me slide, oh my goodness, slide these apart. There we go. Set them farther apart on my mat. And this also comes with a second door. Um, it doesn't store well with the second door on it, but you could do double stamping with that. How awesome is that? So, and that just slides in and out just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and we are gonna start with grabbing my paper trimmer and we're gonna be doing some scoring on this page, on this piece here. Now, I know that some of my customers may or may not have a scoring tool and so I'm going to show you another way to score in case you don't have a scoring tool. So I'm going to be scoring using my trimmer, okay, and remember our light gray blade is for scoring, and we're going to take our olive or mossy meadow piece, just like this, and I am going to score it at one half and three fourths. On, down the long side, okay? So, this is the one half mark on the right side of the trimmer. One half, then I'm gonna move it over to three fourths, okay? Now I'm going to score this side, but I'm not gonna use my scoring blade this time. I am going to grab my stylus, okay, anything that has like this little ball here, and I'm just gonna go right down the track. That's one half, 
just like that. And then I'm going to move it over to three fourths. I'm going to close it and I'm just going to run this down the edge. Okay. And it's still scored just as nicely as with the scoring blade. So if you don't have a scoring tool yet, go ahead and score it that way. Um, then I'm going to rotate and I'm going to score at three inches here. And then I'm going to score again at three and one fourth. All right, so that's how easy it is to score if you don't have like a scoring tool. Or you could use like the edge of a ruler to score. Scoring just makes bending the paper a little bit easier. Now I am going to take my trimmer and I'm going to line this up on the three quarter line right here. And I'm going to cut from this three inch line, so three inches from the bottom, straight up. Wrong blade. Okay? Just like that. And then I'm going to line up this side on the three quarter inch line, and I am going to go right back up. Okay, because we're going to cut that, that section completely off. And then I'm going to take just my scissors and I'm just going to do a little trim right here and right there. All right, so that's what our paper looks like right now. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to burnish on all of my score marks like that. Like this. There we go. Like that. Okay. Just like so. All right. So Basically, I'm going to put glue here, and I'll be able to glue this down and make a little box pocket. You see that little opening there? Okay, just like that. But before I do that, I want to glue my other pieces down so that I can glue them on a flat surface. Well, I know that this piece is going to go there, so I'm going to hold it there, and I'm going to open up my paper. And I'm going to use just a little bit of liquid glue here. And I'm going to center that on the front of that piece right there. Okay? So now that's going to be my front piece. Now this blue piece... I'm going to slide in and I'm going to center it in the top towards the middle. And notice it's not going to go all the way to the bottom, but you're not going to see any of that anyway because the candy bar will cover it and it'll be inside the pocket, okay? So let's go ahead and center that top and sides, okay? Now I'm ready to add glue on my flaps. And I'm going to line that up best I can. Use my bone folder inside there to kind of keep it straight, or as straight as I can. And then I'll come over to this side. And just squeezing my bone folder. Okay. All right, Get a little more glue in there, I think. Go ahead and stick my candy bar in, that'll work, and give it a good press. Now, here's my candy bar. Okay, so I'm going to need to add a small hole punch right up here. So when I add my tag, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take my small hole punch here and punch my hole. There we go. 
Now I can stick that candy bar back in. And it's also, there's also enough room for a gift card and it sticks out just a little bit, okay? So, all right, so now let's look at what I have here. First, I have my tag and I literally just cut, yours is big too, I just cut this as straight as I could with scissors and as close as I could to the words because I did not want the tag to be too big. Okay, and then a little glue on the back of that and I'm gonna glue it right down here onto this mossy meadow and then I'm going to trim around that as leaving a slight little border just like that. Now I'm ready to punch my hole there. And then I'm going to take a piece of my twine here and I'm going to feed it through here. And then I'm going to feed it through here. Maybe, get it through there, all right. And then I'm just gonna tie a little knot and then I'll trim off the edges. All right. Now I can go ahead and trim off that. So you wanna put this tag on first before you use the rest of your twine. Um, just so that you make sure you have enough for this piece here. Okay, now when I stick my candy bar in there, that'll just kind of hang on front. All right, so let's go ahead and throw those scraps away. Now I'm left with this piece and somewhere my little shiny foil piece. Hopefully it turns up again. I'm not sure where it went. It was here, but first we need to color. And I am just going to pick colors from inside here to color with. And I'm using Copics, but you don't obviously have to use those. You can just do whatever you want. So this is G00. I'm gonna use G00 for the scarf. Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to think I'm gonna color the sleigh a red color. Um, thinking R17, which is a lipstick orange. I just ate. All right. All right, so there we go with the lipstick orange. And I see it got a little bit outside of the lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my white gel pen and I'm just gonna color right over the top of that and cover that up a little bit. All right, and then for my rabbits, I'm just going to use a C1, which is just a super light gray, just to give them a little sh shading. Um, but they're gonna be primarily white rabbits. Okay. There we go. And maybe I'll take some E93 and put a little pink in their ears, a little pink on their cheeks. There we go. And then I will take C3, which is a darker gray, and I'm just gonna color the skis on the sled. 
Here we go. And then I'm going to go back to that C1. And I am going to just add a little bit of ground to the bottom of that. So it doesn't look like they're floating in air. And that looks good. So now I'm going to take that silver circle. I'm not sure where the other one went. But I have that one. And I am going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this down. There we are. On the center of that. And then I'm going to take my foam tape and I just have the leftover here from a sheet. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that on the back of this, just like that, two pieces. Peel those backings off. And we will stick that right there on the front. And then I will take my twine, whatever twine that you have left, and I am going to just wrap this around. I'm going to leave a little hangy there and wrap it around as many times as I can get with whatever I have. Boy, I have a lot here. Okay, and now I'm going to just tie my bow. I did not measure the twine when I cut it, so just do your best to get it. Hopefully it'll be enough to get it around a couple times. Maybe not 17 times, but at least a couple. All right, so there's my little bow and my project. My first project is now done. So there's the original. Here's the second. The um, gift card goes in here. I don't know why Alexa just started playing. Alexa, off. Okay, so there we go. So that's the first project. I hope you liked that one. It'll be a cute little coworker gift or a cute little packaging for a friend um, with a little gift card. And who doesn't love chocolate at Christmas, right? All right, the next card we're going to make is going to be this barn door gift card holder card and it looks like this so the pieces that you have for this card you have this piece which is poppy parade you have this piece here you have a piece that looks like this then you have for the front you have that piece there which was cut with the stitch so sweetly dies and then this piece here which is also cut with the stitch so sweetly dies and then we have this green and you may have a bow that looks like this or like this i ran out of this ribbon so then i switched to this ribbon so um either way and then you have a random Topiary piece or a uh, poppy parade. This piece here. All right, so that's what you're going to need for this particular project. And first, we're going to start off by now your paper is already scored for you, so you can go ahead and There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut, I believe I cut three inches. Yep, three inches. So I'm going to put this on my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut three inches from the top and then I will, well actually, let me just show you how I'll do it. Okay. So this is my front of my card, this side here. So I'm going to put this at the top. And I'm lining this up with the three inch mark. And I'm gonna start my blade at the score mark and then go up, okay? And then I'm going to rotate my paper, put the score mark on the line, and then I'm gonna cut down to there. And that's how I'm gonna create my barn door, okay? 
This is scrap, trash, throw away, whatever you'd like to do with it. Okay. Now we are ready to assemble our card. So this we don't need. I'm going to set that over there. I am going to start by assembling the inside of the card first. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to glue this to the top of the inside. Just like that. We'll glue, glue that down. Now again, if I am going too fast, please pause the video. Take your time. Um, I have no concept of how long it takes other people to do this while I'm just working by myself. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and stick this piece there. Butt it up right against it, just like that. Then this random piece. This piece here is what's going to create my pocket. And so I'm only going to put glue on three sides or you could use score tape or adhesive, but you only want to do it on three sides. And I'm just going to glue that down right on the inside, right there, okay? Let that dry and now, it, now it'll be ready for a pocket. Okay, so now we're going to work on the front. This card is coming together so very quickly. I'm going to take the green stripe and put glue on that on the people side. Now, if you like the back side of the paper better than the side I'm doing, use the other side of the paper. It is all you, okay? Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm only, I'm going to center it on the front here, but I'm only gonna put glue down at the bottom. Okay, we don't wanna put glue at the top because obviously there's nothing there for it to glue to. So I'm just gonna line this up, center it as best as I can right there and I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside so that I may color my little reindeer now again I'm using Copic markers but you could use colored pencils heck you could even use Crayola markers if you wanted um, you could use watercolors you can use really anything that you would like so first I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna color the antlers with an E30. So there's an E30. This is bisque, okay. There we go. Little color there and that's it. Now I'm also going to bring back that lipstick orange, that R17 because I think this color matches the Poppy Parade. Now, if you have the Stampin' Blends and you use the Poppin Poppy Parade, obviously that's the same color paper. It would match perfectly, but I already have my investment into Copic, so I do not own the Stampin' Blends at this time. All right, so there we go. Just go ahead and color that. How cute is that? Now I'm going to take my E13. This is called Light Suntan. And I am gonna color the rest of my reindeer, except for the feet, in Light Suntan. Now this is coloring is just quick and dirty. I'm not doing a whole ton of shading. Um, Copic markers, you don't need all of the colors to do all the shading. You can just add more ink, more layers to get a darker shade. So like if I wanted the bottom left hand side of this reindeer's face to be darker, I'll just add more ink, okay? The more ink, the darker it will get. Can you see that shading already? Now underneath here, there would be shading under the bow. I'm not gonna switch colors. I'm going to color my deer, then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to add a few more layers of ink right there, okay? There we are.
There we go, a little quick and dirty. And finally, for his hooves, I am going to use C7, which is just a really dark gray that looks almost black, but it's not quite black. There we are. And so the snowflakes I stamped on the background of this was done with a mossy meadow. And then I used Memento Tuxedo Black for the actual reindeer and the sentiment just for you. And on the inside, I also used Memento Tuxedo Black for this sentiment here. All right, so that's all for that. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this now to the front in the center of that panel that's already there for it. And then I'm gonna get my glue dots out. All right, here's my card. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that flat. Now this die cut is from the Stitch so sweetly and it comes with all of these rectangles and all of these fun shapes as well. I use this all the time. That's why it's out on my desk permanently. Okay. Now my glue dot so I can add my little bow. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to use a bigger glue dot. There we are. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this glue dot off. There we are. And I'm going to stick it right here in the center and then I'm gonna put the center of my bow right there and pull my piercing tool out. Okay, there we are. And I'm gonna give my bow a little trim. There we go. That looks good. And then I'll take the gift card out of here. And now it works just perfectly in here. Okay, and the little panel in the middle helps hide so the recipient can't see it until they open the card. All right, so that is our second project. There was the original. Here's the one I just made. All right. Let's go ahead and set that aside. And finally, we are going to work on this card. Now, remember I use this snowflake embossing folder for the back of this. And this is the last month that you are able to um, purchase that from our holiday mini. So you have this piece here and you have a strip like that and you have um, some houses so I then you will also have this piece and this piece this piece this piece this one has lots and lots of pieces then you have a little wreath and then that piece, you have two scallop circles, one that is stamped and one oval that is not. Um, I think that might be all the pieces we have for this. So yes, I know there are tons of pieces. So let's go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our scoring out and we're gonna score this. But the thing is, is I didn't write down my score marks. So let me go ahead and quickly measure that. One and a quarter, four, I should just get my ruler. All right, so we are going to score at three and three quarters. Yep, three and three quarters. That's gonna be our first score mark. Okay, three 
three and three quarters, just like that. And then my next score mark is going to be at, I should, I, pro, I think I have this written down somewhere. But I don't know where. And then my next score mark is at six and a half and then nine and a quarter. So six and a half. and nine and one fourth. Now I found a little note here and I'm going to guess that if I flip this over, because this piece is 10 and a half by four, okay? And I bet these score marks are at one and a quarter. Yep. And then at four, yep. And then at six and three quarters. Yep. All right. so. Here we go. Here are those score marks again. So this white piece is 10 and a half by four, and we scored at one and a quarter, four, and six and three quarters. And then the DSP that we use for this, those measurements are right here. And I will make sure to try and post those um, to the side in the video for you. But if not, there they are. All right, I will go ahead and I'll just leave that little note somewhere on my screen in my little area and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold, fold, fold. So that way I have like a zigzag fold, okay? A valley, a mountain, a valley. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to burnish those. All right, so there we go. Now I am sure that you can figure out what pieces go where. This one is gonna go here. Then our wreaths, make sure the bows are at the top, are gonna go in the middle. And then our stars on that first little flap. So go ahead and glue those down, center. Okay, there's one, then open that up. There's two, make sure it's centered. There we go. And then this last piece, we'll get centered just like that. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my first oval and I'm going to have all three of my flaps and I'm going to glue it down right in the center, but I'm only gonna glue it to this first flap. Okay, I don't want glue to go onto the wreath piece, so I only want glue to go right there on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some glue, not too much, and I'm going to put glue on that edge and now I'm going to just center it, okay? Then I'm going to take my oval that is not stamped and I'm gonna center that right onto this scalloped oval, okay? All right, so that's the first part. Next, I'm gonna take my last oval and my other scallop and I'm just gonna glue those centered. All right, so it looks just like that. So here's what we have so far. Okay, now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to flip this and line it up with this. And I'm only gonna put glue on this right hand side because I don't wanna, I wanna make sure I don't go past the wreaths and then I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna fold it over and watch. 
Now they're perfectly lined up, okay? And then there's nothing that goes there. Now I'm going to take my piece that is embossed with the snowflakes and I'm going to center this card base or this part of the card right there. Okay? And then this piece goes right onto the back, centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that and get that out of the way. So then that part is done. All right, so that's what I have left, okay? Here is what I have left. So I need to look at my strip here and decide. Now this strip has lots of sayings and they, it also has lots of languages. So I kind of gave you an assortment and decided that you could pick from here. Um, I think that I'm going to pick this greetings of the season. Now I know that these are about a quarter inch. So I'm going to get out my paper trimmer and I'm going to line that up at the quarter inch mark. Just like that. I'm gonna come down that far, looky there, quarter inch. And then I'm going to trim right there. So that's this, the greeting I'm going to use on my card. Greetings of the season. Now keep in mind, you can use any one of these. There's lots of choices, okay? So there's that. Then I'm going to take, now I have a couple more houses than you have. You only have what I gave you. But I literally am making mine from the scraps. So, but I think I'm just gonna use these three right here, okay? They're all on one piece and then there's my three um, trees also. So I'm gonna go ahead and fussy cut this out. because eh, it only takes a second and I didn't buy the dies. Um, I don't know that I'm going to buy the dies. I, um, yeah, I think these aren't very hard to cut out and I don't see myself filled with sadness at the thought of not getting the house stamp set in dies, so yeah. But I just thought the paper was cute and thought, you know what? I can just fussy cut a couple houses out. That's not a big deal. Sorry, Patty. I know it is a big deal, but it's it's really not. Okay, so there's one house. And then I'm going to cut out the next house. So our hostess for December is Rhonda, and she will get to pick out at least $63 with worth of hostess rewards, depending on her sales orders. Um, if you spend more than your required purchase, then obviously the amount of free stuff that she earns will go up. Keep in mind next month, we get a new mini catalog, and let me tell you, it's got some cuteness going on in there. And, we also get two months of celebration, two full months. So celebration will start January 5th and it will run through February 28th. And for every $50 you spend, you can earn um, different things based on how much you spent. If you spent $50, you could, um, earn one $50 free stamp set or paper pack. Or if you spent over a hundred, you could get two of those things. Or there are a few items in the catalog that are for a hundred dollar sales. So like little bundles. So if that is an interest to you, you can always reach out and contact me via my website at jamieburton.stampinup.net. And again, I will have a hostess code and I will link that in the description below. 
and th that hostess code will be good until December 20th. However, it may close out sooner um, if I can get everybody's orders in sooner with the holiday season. If there's Christmas things that people want, I am more than willing to get the order placed so that people can get what they want before Christmas gets here. Um, so let's say if you have all of your orders in by the 15th of the month, I could get that order placed and it could be here before Christmas. So just keep that in mind. Okay, there's one tree, two trees. I have one more tree to go. And you know, I have this little piece of tree. I think I'm going to cut this little piece of tree out and um, I'm going to fake it. I'm going to pretend that it's a whole tree because, you know, the trees are cute. And you don't have to have a whole tree. You can fake it. It'll be fine. I promise you. Now, I tried my very best to make sure everybody got at least three trees. And if I didn't, I apologize. I am so very sorry. Um, but, you know, I did my best. All right. And then I'm going to take and cut out just this top portion of this tree. Even though I know I don't have the bottom. It will be fine. I will be just fine. Okay. There's my scraps. I'm going to go ahead and throw those away. And now I'm going to assemble what I want on the front of my little oval here. And I am going to be using the last of this dimensional page. Okay. So obviously I want this one to be front and center. Okay. Or in my background. Okay. So you guys know me I'm just gonna glue it down because you know I've already decided so I'm probably not gonna change my mind and if I did well I'll just pull it up because that's how I roll anyway all right but it will be fine I promise I mean how can this look better at this point it's already so cute and look the house is perfect okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna center that big old honking house right there okay then I'm going to take and I'm going to put more foam tape on here and I'm going to pop it up right there towards, I think, the right-hand side. Ooh, you can really see my cutting wasn't so great there. Go ahead and trim that. Go ahead and tear that off. Hmm, before I stick that down, I'm having second thoughts. Should I put that down first or that over the top? Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna hold up a second and I'm gonna glue the red house down first. Pop the red house up. See, all, everybody's houses are gonna look so different because I'm going to actually have that all the way over here. No two sections are going to be the same. Oh, I need a little more tape because this needs to be a little bit higher on that side. Okay. And then I'm going to line that up just like that. Oh, looky. Isn't that just so cute? Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just... I was thinking of putting this tree right there, okay? So I'm just going to take my glue, put a little glue dot down there, okay? Then I'm going to take this other small tree and put a little glue on that, and I am going to put it literally right over the top of that bottom half so that you can't even tell that it's not a whole tree. But there's still trees. And that leaves me two trees. So then I can open this and I can put this little tree by this sentiment. Okay. 
right there. How cute is that? And then I can do the back and put this glue right there. And I'm going to glue my little tree right there. And I lost my wreath, but thankfully I have plenty of wreaths. So let me grab another wreath because you know, it's not gonna be done until it has the wreath. And it's probably here, I just don't know where. Oh, I think that's all gone. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and here's another little wreath. I'm gonna go ahead and cut, fussy cut this little baby out. Because I think our house needs a wreath. And why not? All right, so there's that. Oh, I don't need it. Take a dimensional here. Stick it right there on the back of my wreath. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back over. And see this window right here? I think that wreath is gonna go right there. Oh, it's a little crooked, a little, little crooked. Right there. Okay, and then I have the last thing is I'm gonna just go ahead and put some glue on the back of my greeting. And I'm just gonna put it right underneath the houses. It's not popped up, it's glued straight down. Okay, there we go. Greetings of the season. And then you flip and you flip and you can sign on the back and voila, we are finished. There's those measurements again for that white center piece. Of course, you could make this a full size card and make this a 10 and a half by five and a half inch piece. Use the same score marks, um, or you could adjust them a little, however you want. But I think this would be totally cute as a full size card as well. And then just slip that in your envelope and you're good to go. So if you have any questions or concerns, comments, feedback, let me know. Go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for notifications for all future videos because it's December. I got a lot planned. Hopefully I'll actually bring them to life. It was great to see everybody. Hope you all have a safe and happy holiday season. And don't forget, this is the last month to order from this catalog, August through December. So. This is all going away, so get in, get what you need now before it's all gone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.